Uh, well, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Delivering Next Generation uh, Intelligent Asset Management for SAP Customers. My name is Pat Willett, uh, and I run sales for North America for Crave. Uh, before we get started, uh, just quick housekeeping. We do have the Q&A and chat features enabled. If you should have any questions for our speakers during the webinar. We will also be launching a poll towards the end and invite you to uh, participate by selecting responses when they appear on your screen. Uh, and then additionally, at the conclusion of the presentation, we will have the Q&A session um, to answer any additional questions you may have. Uh, and then following the webinar, uh, you will be receiving a recording of the session. Uh, so next slide. So just a little bit about Crave. Uh, so we have three levels of partnership with SAP, uh, build, sell services. Um, we're, we've been around uh, since 2007, so 15 plus years, uh, 50 plus prepackaged uh, apps on the SAP app store. I should say 20 of which are on the SAP app store. Uh, 50 enterprise uh, customers serve globally and then a T, a continually growing team size of 200 plus. Some of our partnerships over on the right-hand side, um, certifications, we are a diverse uh, woman-owned business, and they're just some of our awards and recognition by SAP. Uh, next slide. Here's just some of our core competencies and we'll spend a lot of time on it, but uh, so we've got intelligent warehouse management, intelligent supply chain automation, uh, business technology platform, intelligent enterprise, and then of course what we're here for intelligent asset management. Uh, before I hand it off, uh, let me just do some quick introductions of our speakers. So we've got um, Tom Kurtz and Trikant Mustaine. Uh, I'm glad you guys could be here to uh, to speak with us today. So Tom is the VP and global lead for SAP's asset and service management portfolio. Uh, and has 15 years of experience with SAP. And then from the Crave side, uh, we have Shrikant Bustain, uh, Solution Architect and Enterprise Asset Management Mobility uh, and with experience in Enterprise Asset Management Mobility and, and Cloud Platform uh, and, 20, and over 27 years of industry experience. So now with, uh, without further ado, I'll, I'll hand it off to Tom. Tom, it's all yours. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, the introduction and I appreciate the opportunity to spend some time with our audience here today. As Pat mentioned, my name is Tom Kurtz. I'm with SAP, been with SAP for a number of years now. I'm in a function called solution management. For those who are not aware of what that is, we really work with both the, the field organizations, partners like Crave, customers directly, but also with our product organizations. And we really are, are looking at driving the solution strategy of where we need to go um, with our product portfolio, in this case, intelligent asset management. What I wanted to start, I'm gonna probably do 10 to 15 minutes up front here to, to, to paint the larger picture of what we're doing at SAP, how we're looking at our asset management portfolio in general, why we're driving certain capabilities that we are. And then I'm gonna hand it over to Shrikan to go into a little bit more uh, uh, application of that vision into how Crave is, is executing in the field. So to start off, I have a handful of challenges that I wanted to cover, to just touch on here. We've got one per slide. We're going to go through a few of these, but just some of the, the challenges, the trends that we're seeing as we talk to a lot of our customers today. So the first few of these are really around the process side of things, the business process. Of, of asset management. And the first one here, the, the dynamic that we're seeing is that shift towards a more agile approach to maintenance. So what we're hearing from customers is, I don't want to just maintain my assets or maintain my equipment. I wanna manage the entire life cycle of my assets. Uh, and so in order to do that, I wanna be more agile. I wanna be more dynamic in how I approach maintenance. I wanna be able to respond to the changing operating conditions that we see there. So customers saying, um, can you help me bring together to connect the asset strategy with the maintenance execution, close that loop, if you will, of that process. So that's one trend that we're seeing. As we continue on to, to the next one, 
the next slide, uh, we have um, a second level of, of process, um, uh, which is around in going one step beyond the asset management. So if you're looking at, okay, I'm trying to close that loop between asset strategy and maintenance execution, um, but I wanna be able to integrate that maintenance and service world across the larger supply chain, across the larger enterprise. So I don't want to just look at asset management. I need, to, uh, that has an impact potentially to my world of finance, to my world of procurement, to maintenance materials management, uh, inventory, HR. So the, the, really the, the larger enterprise resources that I'm planning and managing for. So how do I go beyond just the world of maintenance and service and integrate that to the larger supply chain, to the larger enterprise. So that's the second level. And as we continue to the next slide, it's really taken us to that third level of maintenance, which is now I have, I have the larger ecosystem. I don't wanna just be within my enterprise. I have stakeholders that are part of this. And in that stakeholder community, in that larger ecosystem, we see the roles changing. Maybe my own roles are changing. If, I'm a, if you're listening to this and you're a manufacturer, you might be looking at, at changing business models. You might be looking at, hey, historically I've made this product and I sold this product to my customer. They became thus an operator of that asset. Um, they needed to service it somehow, uh, maintain it. Maybe they, they did that on their own. Maybe they worked with a third party service provider, but maybe I have an opportunity now the same way those customers might be looking at IT solutions like cloud app applications, and they want to be able to outsource some of that to, to cloud providers. They want to shift that from a maybe from a, a capex to an opex model. Those customers are starting to want to do this with their equipment as well. Maybe I want to subscribe to an outcome of that involves equipment, and manufacturers can be a, a, can provide product as a service as a result of that. So that's something that we're seeing as well. Again, that third level of I need to be able to not just integrate my systems uh, from a asset maintenance and strategy per, uh, service perspective, but also to the inter larger enterprise and then beyond the enterprise into our networks to, to accommodate changing business models and product and service. So that raises another topic too, as we go to the next slide, there's um, the, 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 we see the world within maintenance and service really converging more. So you hear me talk a lot, it's in my title, you hear me talking and you see it in the slides, I'm, re I'm referring to, to asset and service or maintenance and service. And it's really that, that those, those two tangible markets of, of maybe uh, operators who own and operate their own equipment but then also this, this second world of, of service, of, of uh, either service providers that are servicing equipment for third parties, or uh, the, as mentioned, OEMs that maybe are starting to look at how our models are changing and I wanna be able to offer product as a service. If I do that, one of the things I need to be able to do is understand a lot more about that equipment and I wanna be able to service that equipment potentially as part of my, my subscription service, my outcome-based service, if you will. So that's why we see these, these two really starting to merge more in this idea of outcome-based operation, whether it be the service management scenario on the left or, or more of the asset scenario on the right, you're seeing those individual process, sub-processes within the green or within the blue there on the screen. But those two are coming together more when you look at some of the parallels that you have in terms of processes like scheduling and orchestration and dis, dis, uh, dispatching and work execution. When you look at technology, enabling technologies like mobility uh, and how these can complement one another. Uh, as we move on uh, to some of the other challenges on the next slide. So those are the, maybe the more process driven, but again, we wanna talk technology as well. And, and really the asset, the, the, the asset complexity, the increased opportunity to connect assets, to have intelligent assets that tell us information about the, their operations and how we, not only the ability to do that and have that, but the ability to actually translate that into proactive knowledge, proactive decisions. We've had customers at SAP who are now very, I'd say, mature in their approach to predictive maintenance, but it all started with a data project. It started with their 
the fact that they had assets, those assets had data that was captured, but they didn't have a structure in place. They didn't really have a data architecture strategy for how to go about effectively leveraging that information, that data. And so that was the first step is what's our architecture look like? How are we gonna manage our data at a master level and at an operational technology level? And then once we have that infrastructure in place, now how can we use it proactively um, and, and promote this from a predictive maintenance standpoint? So that's another challenge we're seeing from an asset complexity. And finally, as we move to the next slide, um, so we talked about process, we talked about technology, let's also talk about the people and the, the, the changing worker and environment, environmental pressures that we're seeing. So whether this is the, the, the worker dynamic that I think is well documented uh, with the aging workforce. So there are people who've been doing this for a while, they have retirement coming up, maybe they're gonna move off to the next chapter of their lives. Um, are we feeding the new generation of workers in and then how are we knowledge sharing amongst that? And then those, those individuals that are coming in, they're from a, a generation that they, they have, that technology has been an established part of their existence. So now how can we use technology to advance that? From an environmental standpoint, keeping workers safe. Uh, we all know the impacts that the pandemic's had in terms of remote work and and the ability to to use mobile technologies as a part of integration and into the, 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 the kind of the new way, possibly possibly new order of doing things. So, how can we automate processes for those technicians that are in the field and and um, taking advantage of that process? So, as we bring all this together, then on the next slide. Uh, so those are, are, are a lot kind of the overall, some of the, the, the major challenges we're seeing. And that, that's really summarized here on the left. Um, these are maybe six, more or less six areas we just touched on. So the first three, again, getting at some of those process level discussions of or, or market dynamics that we're seeing around, hey, I, I don't wanna just be static in how I look at things from a maintenance perspective. And then I also wanna be able to do, a, to, to, to go further than that to the larger enterprise. I wanna be able to go further than that to the, um, to the larger um, uh, ecosystem and be able to, to integrate and, and effectively communicate there. The ability to connect, I, I have these devices that I need to be able to connect to moving forward. And finally, the last two in terms of resources the people side of it, whether it be the constrained resources that we talked about and needing to be able to, to um, to help those w workers or the, the changing worker dynamics the, and, and the, the, the need to be sustainable and safe. So these are the major market trends, the major challenges, what customers are telling us. So as we move then to the next slide, what this translates to is the capabilities that SAP sees uh, as important and vital to our portfolio. So this graphic on the right is something that you've probably seen um, some version of. It's, it's a way that we like to tell our story in a compact, uh, unified picture. So those capabilities that we talked about, uh, the, the, or rather the challenges that we talked about in the previous slides, the capabilities, the six areas that you see there are capabilities that can impact those directly. So, um, sorry, as we go back to the previous slide, um, the, 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 the capabilities there, the closing the loop, between the strategy and execution that we talked about, the ability to synchronize across your entire enterprise and the resilience that comes with that, uh, the, the collaborative processes that you need across your networks to a larger ecosystem, in, introducing industry 4.0 technologies to manage the complexity of assets that was identified, and, and really optimizing uh, things like intelligence scheduling, crowdsourcing to, to help with those rising service costs and mobile technologies and environmental health and safety systems to manage worker environments. All of those things are what we talked about on the left. And on the right, we see both from SAP's enterprise asset management and service systems, as well as the asset performance management technologies, that, that world of EAM and APM combined with mobile technologies and the asset network and collaboration on the outside there. Those are all the capabilities that we bring in our portfolio. And the final point I'll make before handing over to Srikant on, the, on the, the next slide here, I touched again a lot on the, the world of both maintenance and service. And um, so Srikant, we have the last slide, that infinity 
slide that you had up just a moment ago is not showing on my end. Uh, yeah, there we go. So this is just a, a closing comment here. So when I, when I talk about service, remember it from the concept of end-to-end -end service management. So again, I've touched on field service there, the last one in terms of the dispatching and crowdsourcing, mobile technologies, smart forms that allow the technician uh, some repeatable uh, forms to use in their processing of, of work orders. But it's really the end-to-end -end process all the way from the front end of that. We, we, we talk about sometimes as contract to cash. So the initial contract that you have with certain service levels, being able to, to drive this from uh, a customer service perspective through to the service operations where you do the, the, the quoting and the actual repair work, the, 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 the billing in the end, back to the invoicing, but then the actual field service management work where you do that scheduling, dispatching, work order execution. So all of that coming together is something that SAP really takes pride in, given that a lot of vendors in the market cannot do that. They do parts of this, but it really helps our customers who are already working on some of these pieces from an S4 HANA perspective, we can complement it with these other solutions. So with that, um, I'll uh, thank you for the time today. Uh, and, and in order to execute on this strategy for this product strategy and what we're trying to do to help customers with these capabilities, SAP is proud to partner with a lot of really strong companies, including Crave Tech. So Crave, uh, thank you for your partnership and Srikant, over to you to talk a little bit more about how Crave's working with SAP. Thank you, Tom. Excellent. You, you set a very well, very nice stage for me to talk about uh, how we can help companies to leverage these new functionality. I mean, especially I can see, uh, I, I, I come, I've been involved with SAP EM for the last 27 years and I have seen the the asked by the customers uh, about going beyond just the simple plant maintenance. I mean, that's why most of the SAP customers would always look for some other solutions uh, because they couldn't get enough. Uh, but now we have that, right? We have that basically to take organization from reactive to predictive. It's always, SAP was always considered that uh, uh, SAP can go up to predictive or preventive, not even condition based, right? Go from reactive to preventive. And then we are going to talk about how SAP tools, uh, along with uh, some addition and the value add from partners like us, can take um, customers now from reactive to predictive. And that's the, uh, that's the next thing. So this is uh, something we embrace within our organization, which maps uh, how we can go from reactive to predictive. And everybody wants to get to the predictive level. And some of the organizations are at reactive, some are at pre preventive, some condition-based, and very few predictive. And let's talk about how SAP and SAP tools can get us there. So this is a slide I like uh, to explain. Uh, so I'm going to start from left hand side. I used to have animation that our, I think our um, a digital team kind of killed it. But so you start from left side. If, so that's where if, if somebody is purely reactive, then we of course we need first step is ERP. And we have plant maintenance module, which hosts equipment master, bill of materials, spares, order processing, right? different order types. So we basically bring in the master data and the transaction in an ERP. So we get rid of uh, paper-based processes. And I'll talk about not completely though at this stage, but we have a system of record. We have a digital system of record, which is an ERP, which is SAP. Now what's next? We would like to acquire data at the source because that's still means on the, although you have ERP, when you go and execute the work, you have to print the papers, take it to the shop floor or out in the field. People write on the uh, papers. You know what happens to those papers, right? These people are, uh, the technicians and the field workers are there to work, not to manage and capture the data the way we want. So how do we change that? How do we get the data at the source? And that's where uh, there are different tools available. I'm gonna focus first on the work 
workforce management. So that's where the mobility comes into picture. And SAP has asset manager. Uh, so as probably everybody knows about the work manager, but now we have asset manager. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, you can capture the maintenance work, calibration, facility, rounds manager, all of those functionalities are available to capture the work at the source, wherever you are. In addition to that, you can capture the data through IoT. Uh, so if you have right sensors and data collection mechanism available, you can bring that data through the IoT, and that also you can use for data acquisition. So one is the completion, another is different uh, readings about your equipment and the health of the equipment through the IoT. And third piece, which is very important and was not there before, is the collaboration for better information between OEMs, the distributor, the supplier, the, the dealer, or the retailer, and the and the users. And SAP has a, a product called Asset Intelligence Network that helps uh, now the end users or the user community to collaborate with their manufacturer OEMs who have provided. Now, how does it help? This solution is capable of real-time communication. So whenever there is a recall or there is a problem with specific pump, manufacturer can inform real-time saying there is a problem and this is the solution. So you don't have to wait for recall and you don't have to wait for equipment to fail. Second is if you find something, you can report real-time to the manufacturer. And of, of course, it's, it's all like uh, blockchain. So, um, so it, you can decide who has access to what information uh, within your network. You might decide to share with your sister companies or your companies who you partner with and you, are not, you don't have conflict. So all that is available through the collaboration network. So now we got the data acquisition. We got the right data at the source. Now what's next? We need to analyze that data. And that's where there are two tools available from SAP. First one is performance risk and strategy assessment. It's called ASPM, Asset Strategy and Performance Management. So that tool, basically, uh, as you all know, I'm sure you guys use reliability center maintenance for FMEA as a part of your maintenance strategy. But as of today, all these tools uh, this, these methodologies and the tools are used outside of SAP and they are never integrated. The biggest problem and the failure point for all these, they are excellent tools, was that their analysis never came to SAP or any ERP system real time. And that's a big problem because you do the analysis, you find out what needs to be done, but it never comes to SAP to take the right action. And that gap is now breached through uh, the ASPM. Also, <clears throat> now, of course, when SAP provides this tool, it gives you a blanket template. And that's where the partner like us comes into picture and who has created templates for different asset classes like pump, transformer, circuit breaker, escalators. So for different industry, I think we have around nine asset classes. Uh, the complete framework is ready to go. And we are adding more and more. So that's about, uh, now, another thing is, a lot of the organization says, I don't want just a template. I don't want uh, some uh, templates created. I want complete end-to-end. -end. I want somebody who can come and do RCM analysis. So we have people in your team who can perform the RCM analysis, have work with you, and get those analysis feedback into the SAP ASPM uh, module. Now, so if you look at the graph I had before, here we have reactive, right? preventive, which is uh, preventive can be based upon the manufacturer recommendation and then comes to the condition base. So here we have created conditions based upon the different um, the maintenance strategies. We have identified conditions, we have identified situations and, and we have created condition-based maintenance. Now, next is the predictive. So we got the good data because predictive analytics cannot be successful. Of course, there are different uh, methods to and, and models available for predictability, but most, uh, most widely used model is based upon your historical data. So you need to have a 
good data available within your organization for those equipment. So we got the ERP first, we created system of record, we got the right data. Once we have the right data, we created proper strategies and created conditions. Um, and now we are ready to do the predictive analysis. So there are three different models available as a part of the standard out of the offering. And SAP is continuously improving this product. So again, uh, once we have the predictive analytics place, it will create the recommendation and corrective actions. What do we do with them? Those, we feed them back to our mobile application to take the right action. Of course, there is a integration between uh, these tools and SAP as an ERP. That's continuous integration is also available. So this is, this is our take on how we can help you to go from a reactive to predictive. Of course, you will you can be at different stages. Some you might have ERP already in place. You might have some level of mobility in place, but then you need other tools to implement that complete end-to-end -end loop from reactive to predictive. Now this is about. Now we talked about the uh, the the how we get there. Now we'll talk about what are the tools available. So of course, from the uh, ERP side, we have plant maintenance, customer service, service management, and also specialized modules like work management for ISU, industry solution for utilities. So uh, that helps us to create system of record. Also, there is a scheduling and dispatch tools available. It can be MRSS or can be tools from partners uh, also. Then um, we have tracking and map-based dispatch. This is our value add where you can track your location of the uh, technicians. Then planning workbench uh, to plan the work. Approvals through uh, on the mobile. And we have intelligent asset management tools I talked about is AIN, ASPM, and this predictive maintenance is called PAI now. In addition to that, somebody like us um, will bring in barcode and RFID enablement um, into the mix, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Coming to the mobile part, uh, plan, uh, work clearance management, flexible scheduling and dispatch, asset inventory and inspection, in addition to the asset manager uh, and FSM. Now, as we know, the asset manager is the SAP asset manager is being renamed for asset and services. So asset manager is now having more and more personas being added. It started with technician, then there was the inventory clerk persona was added, also the supervisor persona is added, and now also services persona is added into the newer release. So you're gonna have everything in one uh, solution available for future. Let's talk about uh, how we uh, differentiate ourselves and add value. So uh, typically you see partners, they work on SAP and mobility. Uh, some work on SAP mobility both, some work on only SAP, only mobility, but we do both of them. We also have uh, value adds, mobile applications from us like work clearance management on mobile, um, and then uh, planning workbench for planner to do it on mobile. And also we have a specialized application developed for life sciences industry for calibration. And, and that's using SAP tools. It's available on the app store. And that complements what you do into the uh, standard SAP asset manager and other applications. Now in addition to that, all of these application needs to go on a hardware. So we partner with Zebra. Of course, we work with others too, like Honeywell and uh, Panasonic, but Zebra, we have found that Zebra has everything to offer. So that has uh, scanning, barcode enablement, RF, RFID, uh, and then different form of the mobile devices. <clears throat> you can see here, small handle devices, tablets, wearables, all those options are available from Zebra. Now why this is important? Because you need a partner who understand how these applications work on these devices how they integrate locally, how to deploy them. We also, uh, we have a team who does the MDM, 
configuration, MDM support, how to deploy, uh, how to repackage these applications, how to uh, make them suitable for your organizational structure. So all that stuff is done as a part of the end-to-end -end process. Let's talk a little bit about uh, our implementation methodology. So we bring in design thinking as a part of the process. Uh, most of the time you might probably implement standard out of the box, but sometimes you might need changes. And that's where we go through a complete design thinking process and make sure your team understand what you're getting into and you get the best output uh, at the end as a part of the project. This is this is a quick one of our success story where we have implemented mobile application uh, along with hardware, software, and also of course the middleware, which is on the BTB business technology platform now. Uh, some of our experiences, uh, these are different customers, utility, oil and gas, um, CPG, chemical, uh, so different customer uh, references about the mobility and also the uh, asset uh, intelligence, uh, sorry, IAM, intelligent asset management suite. So how can we make it easier? A um, lot of times we work with our customers and uh, they say they, they don't know how much it's going to cost. They would like to try it out through a POC or a small working. So what we have done is we have created uh, different um, offerings where we define a fixed scope, fixed price, and how we, what we are, we will deliver within that time frame and the cost. You can see this is very reasonably priced, a very reasonable time frame for a very uh, fixed scope. So we have that for IAM, we have that for asset manager, and also for uh, C calibration. If you have any questions, please please feel free to reach out to us so that we can uh, provide you more details uh, along with our success stories and how we can help you to do these quick implementations through our uh, packages. And with that, I'll hand it over to uh, Sunny and Patrick for any questions and follow-up. Yeah, thanks, Rakant. I think we're going to launch a quick poll. Okay. So, Sunny, do you want to launch that poll? Done, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you. And while you're completing the poll, um, if you have any questions, please feel free to enter them into the chat. I'm not seeing any um, questions for our speakers. You did a good job, Tom. Here's one more. Oh. Yes. yes. We will. Yeah. Everyone will be getting a link to the uh, the recording. So uh, we just to, if you have any specific uh, um, queries about any of these tools I talked about, please reach out to us. Uh, we have demo environment where we can give you access to it. Some of those are standard SAP available out of the box. You can work on them. But if you need access or you'd like to see any specific uh, solutions, we'll be happy to uh, schedule some time. Anything else you would like to add, Tom? Um, yeah, actually, uh, I saw 
one more question come in around uh, FSM and mobility. So um, right now that, yes, the, the FSM mobile app is still available. The, to simplify it for customers, what we've done is there's one old, old overall commercial option, which is SAP Service and Asset Manager. And then through that, it's uh, scenario based. So based on what the customer is needing, and we have, uh, and 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 be able to apply the right technology to it, and that that's part of the discussions that we can in, get into with individual customers. So the FSM mobile application is still available. It's uh, it's the the commercial side is just simplified. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. Yep, my pleasure. So nothing else from my side, Shikan. Thanks again for the opportunity. Always good to connect with you and the audience. Yes, excellent. Yeah, thank you very much. I think we'll give a few minutes back to the audience and feel free to reach out to us.